Hello everyone. Today we will going to talk about the heart rate variability and its analysis. So we will start with the introduction and uh, what is heart rate variability as well as how to do the interpretation of the report. So heart rate variability means fluctuation or variation in the time intervals between the adjacent heartbeats. So this is one beat and this is the second beat. And heart rate variability is the difference between the time interval between the, these two beats and then the other successive beats. The heart rate uh, variability reflects regulation of autonomic balance, blood pressure, gut, heart and vascular tone. Now what are causes of heart rate variability? The complex and dynamic relationship between sympathetic and parasympathetic balance means the autonomic nervous system, the regulatory mechanism that control heart rate via respiratory sinus arrhythmia and the bioreceptor reflex mechanism for control of blood pressure and rhythmic changes of vascular tone. The sympathetic nervous system, it stimulates the blood glucose synthesis, people dilatation, slow dilation increases the heart rate. Now what parasympathetic nervous system does? It conserves the energy, constricts the people, aids digestion and slows the heart rate. A healthy nervous system balanced between the sympathetic and a parasympathetic system. Now these are HRV indices means these are the HRV parameters. So starting with their two domains in HRV. The first is time domain analysis, the second is frequency domain analysis. The time domain analysis, it's a statistical operation on RR intervals and the frequency domain analysis, it's the spectral analysis of RR intervals. They both require accurate timing of R waves. Now there are three types of HRV. The first is ultra short term, which is uh, when we conducting the HRV less than 5 minutes. The second is short term which is of 5 minutes and then long term which is of 24 hours. Now the time domain analysis. There is beat to beat or short term variability indices, long term variability indices. This short term variability indices it represent the fast changes in the heart rate like as we already talked about the respiratory sinus arrhythmia which contributes the STV that is short term variability means this variability is because of sinus arrhythmia. Then the long term variability which are slower fluctuation means they both contribute to the fluctuation in the HRV some are fast and some are slow which is because of bioreceptor reflex and thermoregulation related HRV which contribute to long term variability. Then both types calculated from RR intervals occurring in chosen time window. Now the time domain methods. There are different different matrix included in time domain which looks quite complicated but they are simple. Like the first parameter is SDNN which is standard deviation of all NN intervals. The second is SDANN which is standard deviation of average of NN intervals and NN is normal beat to beat enter interval in 5 minute segments of entire recording. Then the very loud term RMSST. It is a root mean square of successive differences between normal heartbeats. Conventional for minimal recording even less than 5 minutes and it provides a better assessment of respiratory sinus arrhythmia. Now this is the graph which are we, which we going to obtain when we will do the HRV. As I have already told you that the very low frequency component and this other low frequency component and high frequency component is there and we have power over this axis and frequency over this axis. Now this is the formula for this RM SST. So it's the average and root mean square of normal to normal intervals. 
now how we can, we can going to analyze this d1 d2 so d1 is the difference in time from t to t1 and d2 is difference in time interval from t t3 to t2 and so on then sd 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 is standard deviation of differences between adjacent normal to normal r r intervals the fifth is nn50 count which is the number of pairs of adjacent normal to normal interval differing by more than 50 millisecond in the entire recording then p nn50 nn50 count divided by total number of nn intervals SDNN again is the standard deviation of interbeat interval of normal sinus speeds. It's a gold standard for medical stratification of cardiac risk when recorded more than 24 hours. If it is believed, then its value is less than 50 milliseconds, the subject is unhealthy. And if it is from 50 to 100 milliseconds, then in compromise health. And if it is more than 100 milliseconds, then it's healthy. Now the frequency domain which we call the power spectrum. These are the variables of frequency level. I have already told you about the these VLF, LF, HF and then this LF norm and this ratio is very important the LF and HF ratio which is main for interpretation of the result which is millisecond square and HF is also in millisecond square. They have they signify the sympathetic and the parasympathetic and the ranges the very low frequency component ranges from 0 to 0 0.04 hertz then low frequency is from 0 0.04.15 then high frequency is from 0.15 to 0 0.14 and this is the formula for LF norm now there are some non-linear measurements also and for these measurements, we plot a point care graph, which look like this. And now this is the summary of all slides. Means these are all the variables and these are units of all the variables. Then what this signifies? This is very important. So make your attention here. This SDNN is for total variability. And RMSST, it mainly signifies that this, these are the changes in the heart rate variability which represent the parasympathetic dominancy. Then NN50, it also represents the parasympathetic dominance. PNN50, it represents the parasympathetic dominancy again. Then the frequency component. VLF signifies nothing. It's not that much significance. But LF, yes. The low frequency, it mainly interpreted the sympathetic, less parasympathetic. HF, which is the high frequency, and it is known for the parasympathetic dominancy. Then LF and HF component, which tells us about the sympathovagal balance. Because this HF relates the sympathetic and this LF relates the sympathetic and HF relates the parasympathetic. Then the variables of this point care graph SD1, SD2 which were uh, showing in the previous graph. SD1 is just opposite to the LF means the LF showing the sympathetic so it's showing the parasympathetic. So for assessment of this uh, sympatho sympathovagal balance this HRV is very important. The heart rate slow, predominant vagal activity, as we know that, and the heart rate increases in sympathetic drive. So HF component is parasympathetic activity and LF is sympathetic activity. And the normal range of LF and HF in population is ranges from 0 0.5 to 1.5. And if LFHF ratio is less than 1, then it indicates good cardiovascular health. This is the HRV reports, which consist of the time domain as well as frequency domain and the nonlinear aspect. So, how we can interpret this report? 
this is the lf by hf ratio which is 2 so it's quite high and we what we have studied that the range it must be ranges from 0.5 to 1.5 so it's more but it's, it's not pathological sometimes because of the stress and other things this jar will get increased and these are the time domain variables and this is analysis starting point and ending point and the total bleed includes they are 4 to 7 and this is the report of HRV 2.0 so now I'm ending the conversation thank you